Hello, this is John Harvey with the Virtual Film Company. I've got Chris and Mystery with me. This is one of our special broadcasts where we drill down into a particular topic. And today we're going to follow up our live stream with more discussion about Google's announcement yesterday and all of the amazing things that Google is going to bring out. You know, having said that, however, I need to say that the day before, OpenAI put on an amazing show as well. And the thing that I really loved about the OpenAI show was that it was only 30 minutes. Google managed to drag out this presentation for two hours. And yes, they had a lot of material that they were showing, a lot of new developments, a lot of upcoming stuff. But when you looked at the members of the audience, people looked like they were falling asleep, they were yawning, <laughs> they were distracted. And, you know, it really just shows that, you know, I think Google should have known better. Two hours is a long time. I'm mean, sure this is, you know, a special conference for developers, but even if you're a developer, you know, sitting through two hours of just, you know, this is the next thing, this is the next thing, this is the next thing. And, you know, many of the jokes fell flat that they told. There was this, you know, it seemed to be this thrust on using Google to control your kids. Uh, you can now oh, yeah. go through your kids' email and, you know, look and see mm -hmm. who they've been speaking to. You can do this with your kids and monitor them. And, you know, I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm glad my daughter is so I'm no longer of the age that she needs to be monitored. But, you know, I don't know if that's the correct message to put out there to say, you know, this is mm -hmm. AI. And by the way, it can be used as a surveillance technology Let's spy on our kids more. Maybe that's I think, Google's new symbol. <clears throat> no, I, I, I think that uh, if you notice, that's just, I feel like, a tactic that, that they uh, want control. Like, you need to, you're being controlled, so you need to control your kids. I mean, as kids, I mean, we kind of could ride a bike. I didn't have to have a helmet when I rode a bike. You know, now all of a sudden we've put all of these safeguards into place because you know we're worried about about the i don't know at what point is it too much you got to monitor your kids emails and you know they're not being able to make decisions and fail for themselves it's a very weird time uh going down that road i feel like is a slippery slope no definitely but you know that seems to be google's message is that you know we're a family-oriented company, and everything we do revolves around family. And you know, it was just, it wasn't as exciting as the OpenAI presentation. And sure, there was, you know, a plethora <laughs> of things that Google presented, you know, as well as putting me as a tutor out of work eventually <laughs> by their <laughs> introduction of their Learn LM product, which apparently is going to be available mm. in the next couple of months, which will basically, you know, help you learn any subject with the aid of a Gemini tutor, your own personal tutor. I thought that was interesting. And they're also pushing this, you know, Gemini Live, um, you know, Astra and, you know, making AI mm. part of your life. You know, I think Google would want to say, you know, everything you do should be driven by AI. My only reservation, or actually I have a few reservations, but my big reservation is that so far Google has absolutely failed at doing this. You know, for example, with Google Maps, Google Assistant, you know, the other Google products that they have on the Android phone, you ask them a question and it's so frustrating. They don't know the answer. It's like talking to a, you know, a chat box from <laughs> many, many years ago. So Hopefully things improve in that direction and we can actually have meaningful conversations with Google on our various devices. Those thoughts, Chris? Eric, I, I, yeah, I think... Go ahead, Chris, go ahead. No, 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 Eric, go. I, I just feel like they are going to... They're this huge conglomerate. They're trying to do everything. They get their hands in all the pots and... At the end of the day, you got like open AI that some people are going to enjoy dealing with that. I feel like uh, Google had the meets with the Zoom 
And, you know, people preferred Zoom, but Google Meets was free. And eventually, like, people wanted to get rid of that subscription, go over to Google. Uh, I feel like Google is the Swiss Army knife. They just, they've got, uh, they've got a little bit of everything, even with the YouTube. You know, they, they have their hands in a lot of pots. So I feel like they just shoot from the hip and they're trying stuff. Other people are going to do it better. And then they tend to, oh, well, they're doing this. So we need to do this. Um, it is true. Got. Well, I, uh, in this case, I think uh, a company like Google on that scale and with this experience in data management and how to get data from people, I think it's Gemini true. or any other AI model that they implement now into all of their services and as you said, John, uh, perfectly, it's um, also directly into Android. It will be a part of Android, in my opinion, right? You will not be able to get it out there. Or it will maybe do constantly analysis of what the user of the Android device does. And Android it's devices true. are not just mobile phones. You have so many little things that play back videos uh, at home. In televisions, we have Android and so on and so on. So if always there's a little Gemini model in there, just by analyzing what you're doing, what you're watching, what uh, some stuff like that, they can, in this case, not just collect data, what they do all the time, but they can interpret it as well, or Gemini can do that for them. Mm. So they can, they can inter uh, the Gemini or the AI model in the end could interpret and connect knots and, and things here to say, oh, yesterday the user did that, now it does that. So it's, it's a complete new intelligence behind data collection. So in this case, in my opinion, it's not like, oh, they're trying this or that. In my opinion, there's something like a master plan behind that. Mm, I would agree 100%. I feel like, uh, I know we haven't mentioned Facebook at all within this whole thing, but I feel like they are also everybody's managing data. And I feel like they've been doing this for a while, the gathering, the collecting, it's just now enhanced and they're able to process even more data and run even more numbers and gather and collect. It's just on steroids now. It's Definitely. Well, before we wrap up, any other observations that you'd like to make, Chris, from the presentation yesterday? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if we would compare OpenAI, the, the new GPT-4.0 model, for example, with Gemini, well, I think that just technically speaking, um, the Omni model is for sure, I guess, quite differently in its structure in comparison to Gemini. Now, um, as the Omni model, it can do several things at the same time. We will see if this technology or way of creating an AI model will be more successful, faster, maybe cheaper, um, taking less memory and, and whatever. So that, that will be quite interesting to see if um, OpenAI and uh, Google and probably also all the others in, in the future go different ways. So, um, or, or if they all come to the same type of let's use omni models or they with multi models or whatever so that from the technical perspective that's that's will be quite interesting to see how it develops yeah i mean i think the expectation is that you should be able to do everything you know in one interface rather than you know switching platforms or interfaces and so you know i think that Omni model is going to win out in the end. Mystery, they have, they have, the, they have the resources for sure. And didn't they empower them? Um, aren't they also working with uh, the chips, the NVIDIA as well? Which to me, that says something right there to how big and powerful they are and how much they can flex. Yeah, no, definitely. So part of the announcement yesterday was about these new chipsets that they're working on. But, you know, in my opinion, to hedge their bets about <laughs> these chipsets being successful is they stressed the importance of their partnership with NVIDIA. So it, yep. uh, it was interesting that sort of speaking out of both sides of their mouth there, right? I, 
I mean, ultimately, you know, the reality is if the chips are successful and, you know, they end up building their own data centers, then why would they use, right? It was the million yeah. dollar question, right? They have yeah. unlimited resources. That's the one thing I would say. Like money is no object with, uh, I mean, it always is, but they, with tech side, they've just been gathering data for so long. I, uh, well, there you got the few giants. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I know we didn't even bring up Amazon at all within this thing, and they're working in the background, I'm sure, with things as well. So it will be interesting to see who in the end will ultimately rule. Well, that's a topic for our next segment. I'm going to close today, unless you had a closing comment, Chris. No, I'm fine. Great. Well, this has been a special segment on the... Google announcement yesterday brought to you by the Virtual Film Company. Please visit our YouTube channel at Virtual Film Company. We also have a Facebook page and a LinkedIn page and would love to see you visit, comment, follow, like, share, just show us some love. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.